Right, hello everyone, my name is Rose Daniel, I'm the Technical Manager with APAL and welcome to the first online session of the Pair Masterclass. We're sorry we can't be there with you in person, but we're pleased to be able to present what we hope is an informative and useful alternative. We've broken down the traditional Pair Masterclass into three bite-sized sessions and this one being the first of three 45-minute sessions that will be held over consecutive Wednesday afternoons where you'll be able to hear about the latest developments in pair production from Europe and Australia. Today's session will review planting systems and discuss the latest developments in rootstocks. And in the upcoming two sessions, we will hear about the most interesting new varieties in Europe and Australia and the important things to consider to optimise fertilisation. Today, you'll hear from Derek Van Hees, a tree management and fertilisation consultant with Fruit Consult in the Netherlands, whom some of you may have met at last year's Orchard Walks or when he was in Australia completing his traineeships. His presentation will be followed by a 20 minute Q&A session where the panel will provide a local perspective on the topics covered in the presentation and answer your questions. On today's panel, you have Marcel Veens, an Australian based fruit, a tree fruit production advisor who supports growers with sound practical advice on all aspects of orchard management. Mick Crisera, the service, services manager with Fruit Growers Victoria who assists Victorian apple, pear and stone fruit growers with all IPDM and fruit production best practice. Dr. Ian Goodwin, the research leader in Agriculture Victoria, who is currently undertaking studies to improve fruit quality and develop sensing techniques to estimate flower cluster number, yield, fruit size and canopy density in pears. He's also the project lead for the new PIPS3 project, developing smarter and sustainable pear orchards to maximise fruit quality, yield and labour efficiency. And we also have Chris Georgopoulos, a grower, packer and exporter with more than 33 years of experience in horticulture. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. I'd like to introduce Derek. Derek Van Hees is a tree management and fertilisation consultant with Fruit Consult in the Netherlands. His family has been growing for four generations, which led Dirk to study horticulture and arable farming. During his study, he commenced and undertook four traineeships, one with Fruit Consult, and with three different fruit growers in Victoria, Australia. And Derek's clients are predominantly based in Holland, the Czech Republic and Denmark. In 2018, Fruit Consult also expanded to include projects in China. Since 2013, Derek has been involved in the redevelopment of the experimental farm Proftein Randwijk, conducting a range of field research projects and trials. Derek, is now, it is now my pleasure to hand over to you. Okay, thank you for the invitation, uh, April. Thank you for the invitation, Rose. Uh, today I want to talk about the development of planting systems in pears and later on shortly about uh, development of rootstocks in pears. Uh, Rose introduced already uh, me. My name is Dirk van Hees and I work for Fruit Consult. Uh, Fruit Consult is a private consulting company in apples, pears, cherries and plums in Europe. Our main area is Holland and Belgium, but basically we are working, we are advising all over uh, Europe. Um, now I want to talk about the current situation uh, shortly uh, in, uh, in Holland. In Holland, uh, 20 years ago, we had two times more apples compared to pears. So we had almost around 13,000 hectares of apples and 6,000 hectares of pears. Today, uh, it's the total way around. So today, uh, there are just 6,000 hectares of apples left and uh, we are all over uh, 10,000 hectares of pears. And there's a reason for that. Um, the apples went down because uh, it's very difficult in our uh, wet uh, and northern European climate. We have less light compared to the South uh, Europe uh, to compete in apples. So we have uh, only some varieties, but not all varieties. And our productions are lower compared to Italy or compared to Eastern Europe, Hungary, for example. Uh, pears is the other way around. We see uh, last 10 years that pears in Spain and Italy, they are struggling with production and also with quality because of global warming. So especially the availability of water and the heat in the summer is a, getting more and more a problem in these companies uh, in South Europe. And we have uh, an extremely good um, 
extremely good climate for growing pears. And that's the reason uh, why uh, pears increased a lot in Holland. Also because sales, of course, sales uh, are extremely good in pears, especially export pears all over the world. Um, and that's the reason why it increased a lot in Holland. I then proved our Randwijk. Proved our Randwijk is very important uh, for us as fruit consult. Uh, we are involved as a partner in Proved our Randwijk together with Wageningen University. NFO, that's the Dutch Fruit Growers Association, and the CAF, that's the cent Central Advice for Fruit Growing. In Proved our Randwijk is a research station, and we have uh, uh, apples, pears, plums, cherries, soft fruits, grapes, and apricots in the research station. Uh, it's around 12 hectares of conventional and 4 hectares of organic uh, growing. In the research station yearly, we do around 150 field demonstration trials, uh, especially to make it practical for the growers to show the growers every year. And of course, this year was a bit difficult. We had to do more online and more uh, on the other way. But normally, uh, we invite the growers uh, a lot to the research station to come with groups to the open day and all these things. So, um, yeah, proof on Randwijk is very important for us for new developments. Now, in proof on Randwijk, we have around 5.1 hectares of pears in different planting systems. And these planting systems I want to discuss about uh, today. So, we talk about the traditional spindle system, the slender spindle system, the super slender spindle system or what we call in Holland the, the court system, uh, the double leader system, and the V system. So these systems I want to uh, talk about uh, today. And one thing is, is, is very uh, important, as, and that's, that's what we see in Holland, that there are, are more ways to roam. And we can compare, of course, the, the systems, but um, yeah, there are several reasons to choose for a system and a system that suits to you as grower. But yeah, there are more ways to roam. That's very important. Okay, let's start with the traditional spindle system, with the old uh, system. Yeah. Okay, here you see some photos of the traditional spindle system. The planting distance of the traditional spindle system in Holland and Belgium is uh, the row distance is around 3.25 to 3.5 meters and the distance between the trees is 1 meter between 1.25 meters. So in the end we end up with 2,300 to 3,000 trees per hectare. Production and I always talk about conference pairs because conference is around 85 percent of the area of pear growing in Holland. So I always talk about conference pears. Conference we pick of 50 to 60 tons per hectare in the traditional spindle uh, system. In the spindle system, we work with a, a table uh, part. And in this table part, we use four to six young table branches and a wire system, uh, two wires to support these table branches that the branches will not fall down on the ground you need an 80 centimeter distance between the wires, otherwise it's too, uh, too close in the, in the traditional spindle system. Now, in the traditional spindle system, we plant always two-year-old or three-year-old knip trees from the nursery. A tree like here on the photo. We don't do any pruning in the first year because um, all the leaves will take care of more uh, root activity and root activity will give a better trunk diameter, so more growth in the end. So we don't do any pruning in the first year, but we keep all the branches. What we do is when the branches are extremely long, like this photo, we cut all the branches that we use as table branch, we cut them back to around 60 centimeters. Otherwise, you end up with only some um, uh, wood some branch, some, some, some leaves on the end of the branch 
And then the pass will all also be on the end of the branch and we want the, the, the pass more close to the trunk. So that's the reason why we cut them back. Now tree training has uh, changed a lot in the last 10 years. We don't do any bending anymore. We totally stopped with bending uh, because, because we saw a lot of negative effects in the past of bending. But what we do is uh, we do a lot of cracking nowadays uh, in the table branches. So we keep, of course, the leader. The leader can stay. And all the branches that are competing with the leader that are too strong, we crack them uh, and lay them back on the wire system. Now here's some example of cracking. This, this is an example in apples. But what, what you see is with a special uh, scissor. Oh show you the scissor yeah here the scissor will come with the special scissor with only the blade on the upper part of the scissor we make a cut only in the upper part of the branch uh, on a stump of around 10 centimeters from the trunk and then we break down uh, the branch and the the reason why we do it is to calm down the branch uh, why the branch get early into a productive mode and that's very important once we want to have early productions. And what you also see on this photo uh, is that there is already a new shoot existing uh, over here. So the new, new shoot is coming out and uh, that's very good uh, because the new shoot we can use in the, yeah, in the, later on in, in the coming years. Now this is an example in apples. This is an, next one is an example in pears. You see, this is now a very productive uh, table branch, and this was cracked in the past. So cracking is very important in the spindle systems, actually in all systems, but we use a lot of cracking nowadays and don't do any bending anymore. The second thing that's very important is the pruning. And I don't want to talk a lot about it because today is not about pruning. But what's very important is that uh, uh, we use only young wood in the trees, in, in all kinds of systems. But the, all the wood should be upgrowing because upgrowing young wood gives the best quality pears. Now here, on the left side, you can see a photo from the winter, on the right, uh, from the harvest, and you see all the big, good quality pears are on the upgrowing wood. So that's also what we changed the last five years in pruning. We only work with young, upgrowing wood. Now, next system I want to talk about is the slender spindle. It's not really a, a lot different compared to the traditional spindle system, as you see on the photos. However, the, the difference is the planting distance. We plant, plant it much more narrow. So they talk about three to 3.25 meters uh, between the rows and 70 to 90 centimeters in the row. So then you go from, let's say 3,000 hectares, 3,000 trees per hectare to 3,500 to even 4,700 trees per hectare. So more trees per hectare. And with more trees per hectare, we increase the production, the production to uh, talk about conference pairs of 60 to 70 tons per hectare. Uh, we work with less table branches. We start in the beginning to use all table branches and then in the end we go back to maximum three to four young table branches per tree. Otherwise it gets too shady in the bottom part. Also in here the wire system is very important to support these table branches. We start uh, with a different type of tree in the slender spindle system. We use not a knip tree because with a knip tree you get uh, quite heavy um, um, branches uh, next to the leader. But we start with a run through tree. So it is not cut back in the nursery. And it, it's quite a high tree with uh, small feathers all over the, uh, the, tr the, the trunk not only in the bottom part, but also in the top part, two-year-old or three-year-old trees from the nursery. So a different type of tree. Now the advantage is that you uh, plant a lot of volume. Trees are mainly uh, two meters uh, um, 
they, they are around two meters high. So you plant a lot of volume. So you can get early into production. And that's, that, that's a nice thing. The tree training is a little bit comparable to the traditional spindle system. Okay, the next planting system I want to talk about is the super slender slender spindle system, or what we in Holland call the cord system, because it looks a little bit like a cord, as you see on these uh, photos. Planting distance is even more narrow, so we plant 2.75 to 3.25 and 50 to 60 centimeters apart. 5,000 to even more than 7,000 trees per hectare. Production is a little bit the same, however it gets earlier into production and that makes it interesting. Uh, we don't use traditional table branches, uh, we use the branches all over the, uh, the tree. Uh, pears, you don't need coloring, so that's, that's also e easier compared to apples. Uh, we use a support system, support wires. However, uh, on a short, um, a little bit, a little bit uh, shorter compared to uh, the normal distance. So we use always not, not, not wider than 60 centimeters because otherwise it's too uh, wide. And we cannot drive through it with the tractor anymore. Now we use the same uh, type of tree uh, with planting compared to the slender spindle system. So also the run through tree. Sometimes the trees are a little bit lighter uh, and a little bit cheaper from the nursery, uh, but these are perfect for the, um, the cord system. And like I said, high productions in the, in the first years are possible with this system. Now, very important in this system is that you cut the feathers back to 30, 40 centimeters immediately after planting because we want all the development short to the trunk. Now, the fourth system I want to discuss is the double leader system. Here's some examples of the double leader system. The double leader system, uh, also again a bit the same row distance, so 3 meters to 3.25 meters uh, row distance and in the row uh, 1 meter to 1.25 meters. So 2,500 uh, trees to 3,300 trees per hectare and the double number of leaders. So you talk about 5,000 to 6,600 leaders per hectare, that's very important. Production is more or less the same, like the slender spindle and the cord system. However, uh, it's a little bit easier to manage the vigor in this system. Also, we use uh, table branches in this, this system to get early in the early years, in the first five years already into a high production. Now, for the, because we have the, the, the table branches, we also use a wire system to support these table branches. Now, with this system, you start again with a knip tree, so not with a run-through tree, but with a knip tree from the nursery. Um, and uh, it's very important that it has two very strong leaders and the rest of the side branches can be a little bit uh, shorter, that's no problem. But when the side branches are all very long, then we cut back uh, the side branches, the, the, the branches that we go to, that we're going to use for the table branches. We, put them back to 60 centimeters again. Now, very important uh, thing to do after the first year. So the first year we let them grow. And then after the first year, we start to tie the leaders uh, to the tonking stock, uh, to the bamboo, uh, the end of the first year. So uh, uh, after the root development uh, took care. And when, the, when there is a difference in the leaders, when one leader is in particular much stronger than the other leader, then we crack the strongest leader to get a nice and even orchard. And that's a very important uh, thing to do. So in Holland, it's mainly done in August, September, uh, the end of the first growing season, but when the, the, uh, the wood is still a little bit warm because then the cracking is much easier to do. Now, as I uh, told you already, we also use a table system to get early into production in uh, the double leader system. 
And again, uh, wire system to support the table branches of around 60 to 80 centimeters. When the table branches are too strong compared to the leader, we crack them again and then lay them down on the wire and clip them on the wire that they cannot move. Okay, the last system I want to talk about is the, uh, the V system. The V system is also used a lot in the Netherlands the last uh, 20 years. Here's some examples of the V system. The V system, the row spacing is a little bit wider, so we plant the 3.25 to 3.5 meters between the rows. And uh, in, in the rows, uh, 1 meter to 1.20 meters uh, between the, uh, the trees. So that means 50 to 60 centimeters between the leaders on each side. So 2,400 trees to 3,000 trees per hectare. So it's basically between 10 and 12,000 liters per hectare. Production is the highest. So the V system gives the highest production in pairs and conference pairs. And we talk of high productions of 65 to 75 tons per hectare. In the first five years, we also use in the V system a table uh, to, uh, <coughs> to a tab table branches uh, to get early into production. And even some growers use extra wires, wider wires in the table part to support these table branches. It's not always necessary, uh, but some growers, they like it. I like it too, because then you can take care that not the, the branches will not go down and not hang on the ground. Now we, we start with the same tree, basically as a double leader system, only it has to have four good leaders uh, and the tree training is more or less the same. So the first year, we let it grow and then after the first year we go to tie down the leaders to the bamboo uh, stalks. And when the one leader is particularly stronger than the other ones, then we go to break it again, to crack it, to make sure that the leaders grow nice and even. Now this is a very important one. This is about the ideal number of leaders. And, um, uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of discussion, a lot of trials done about it uh, in the last uh, 30 years, I would say. But we see that four leaders is the most ideal. If you work with more leaders, then it's very difficult to get them nice and even into balance. So four leaders is, is ideal to start. Uh, and then to get alien production, work with a table. So that's what we start in the first five years. Then after five years, we go to remove the table because it gets... Uh, too dark in the bottom part of the tree. So then we remove the table branches and then it's quite simple, remove on both sides every year one table branch. And then in the end, around 10 years after planting, uh, we only uh, leave just the four leaders. Then we see conference is a very productive pair. And if uh, it gets too productive, you need to do a lot of hand thinning work. So we see, especially on older trees, uh, a little bit weaker orchards, that hand thinning can become, hand thinning and size can become a problem. And what we do to make uh, the labor a little bit uh, uh, easier, a little bit less labor, uh, to get a little bit less labor involved, is that we remove one leader on every uh, tree and then go back to a tree leader system. Now this, what, uh, this I want to show in, uh, um, in the next trial. <clears throat> uh, this is a, a trial of a four leader system on Proeftuin Randwijk, planted in 1999. Uh, an old uh, V system, very productive, uh, 75 to 80 tons per hectare of conference pairs, as for conference is very productive. However, it uh, costs a lot of hand thinning work. So every year we have around 200 hours of hand thinning, and okay, now with the bravest, it gets a little bit easier, but uh, still it's, it's, it's simply too productive. So what we did, we did a trial, uh, started in 2013. Um, so we went back from a four leader system to a three leader system. So we removed simply one leader, like shown on, the, on this photo. And we saw, uh, 
yeah, we, uh, of course, we took care of production. We did, did measurements on production about fruit size, all these kind of things in this trial. And we saw regarding production that we pick uh, five tons less uh, from a, in, in the three liter system compared to the uh, four liter system. So the four liters, we had 77 tons uh, per hectare and the three liter system 72 tons uh, per hectare. And five tons, that's around 10 fruits per tree. So we picked 10 fruits per tree less from a V system, from the four liter system compared to the three liter system. Now we also uh, looked at the fruit size and there was not a big difference between in, in fruit size. Uh, the three liter system, the fruit size on average was just one gram uh, per pair on average uh, bigger. So there was not a big difference in fruit size. So in fruit size, it also did not have a huge um, uh, advantage. So we lost five tons per hectare on production and five tons in, 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 in hours, um, yeah, in a return grower, we talk about 2000 to 2500 euros per hectare loss on uh, return to the grower on three liters compared to four liters. However, and that now, now it becomes very important. Uh, however, you see that uh, regarding pruning, you have 25 to 30 hours less work in a three liter system compared to, compared to a four liter system. Now, 25 to 30 hours, that's in Holland, that's around 500 to 600 euros saving uh, per hectare. That's a bit the same with hand thinning. We saw that we, uh, that we didn't have that much hand thinning work. We, had, uh, we could leave 20 pairs more per tree. So we had uh, 20 pairs per tree less hand thinning work. And 20 pairs, that's around 50 to 40 to 50 hours hand thinning uh, savings per hectare, labor savings per hectare. So you talk about, again, again 800 to 1,000 euros per hectare saving on hand thinning. 30,000 pairs, uh, we pick around 10, 000, 10 pairs less per tree. So that's 30,000 pairs per hectare because we plant 3,000 trees per hectare. So that's uh, 30,000 pairs per, per hectare. That's around 30 to 40 hours of picking. So that's again, 600 to 800 hours we save on labor of picking. So in the end, you save on labor, you save again, around between 1900 and 2400 euros per hectare. So you save also a uh, bit the same as you win, uh, as you lose with uh, the production loss. And what we see in practice, and this, this was in trial, but in practice we see uh, the advantages are even bigger than this. Because mainly uh, most of the growers will go back from a 4 liter system to a 3 liter system is because of growth issues. So the tree becomes, because of the production, the tree becomes too weak and you end up with two small pairs. And that makes it really interesting to go back to a 3 liter system after 15 to 20 years of high productions. Now labor, what we also see in Europe is labor becomes more and more a problem. So in many companies to save labor with the same result is very interesting. So um, yeah, uh, labor becomes more and more a problem we see in Europe in the last five years. So also this is an advantage to go back from a four liter to a three liter system. So yeah, I think it's, it's a very good decision for uh, not for all orchards, but let's say for 50% of the orchards to go after 15 to 20 years, go back to a three liter system. Okay, now I spoke already a lot about different systems but I want to compare them a little bit. And um, yeah, a lot of things I think uh, later on this presentation will be shown on the APAL website and you can uh, read it yourself a little bit. Uh, I think that's good. But one thing I want to talk uh, shortly about is that the traditional spindle, if you compare, compare the different systems together, then the traditional spindle is the lowest in the pr productions when you talk about the first five years. So the first five years, the traditional spindle 
as the lowest production. If you talk about uh, the uh, older systems, then the slender spindle double leader AV system has more or less the same productions in the first five years. And the super slender, because you, 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 you plant so many trees per hectare, uh, has a little bit higher production in the first uh, five years. So that's interesting. Talking about full productions, and now I'm, I'm talking about conference pairs, then the traditional spindle has again the lowest productions, the super slender spindle, the, the cord system and the double leader system has more or less the, the same uh, production, maximum production, and the V system has the highest production. So that might make the V system a little bit uh, more interesting. However, what we see if, if you talk about investments, uh, and then uh, I'm only talking about trees, about uh, the investment in material and about labor, is that the traditional spindle has, again, the lowest uh, investment, the slender spindle, super slender spindle, and the double leader is more or less the same, but the V system uh, is also the highest investment. So that's almost one third uh, or 25% uh, higher investment compared the other, to the other system. So that, that's quite a high investment. Now I'm talking way too long. So this one I want to skip. This, this you can read uh, back on the APOL uh, website. But just go back to the situation in Holland again. Uh, we see in Holland that there's not really a future for the traditional spindle system uh, because uh, yeah, too low production and not, uh, not really eff efficient. The super slender spindle is, is interesting because of the high productions in the early years. However, in practice, we see that growth management, so root pruning is, is quite difficult uh, because the trees are so narrow planted. So the super slender spin spindle is planted still quite a lot, but growth management is quite difficult. The V system is also planted still a lot. However, we see in the V system more and more prob problems coming with the demand of labor uh, and labor gets more and more a problem uh, in Holland. So I think yeah, still around 20 to 30% of the growers, they, uh, yeah, they uh, really, find that the V system is the ideal system and they plant only the V system. But I think 60-70% uh, of the growers, uh, they plant or a double leader system or the slender spindle system. I think these systems are planted mostly in Holland at the moment. And the reason for this is both systems are quite easy to manage uh, with also with uh, 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 unskilled labor and also these systems are a bit less labor intensive compared to the V system. Uh, so that's the reason why these systems are a bit the most popular systems at the moment in Holland. Okay, that was a lot uh, to talk about about the planting system. Now I want to shortly talk about uh, uh, about the development in, in pear rootstocks, and then we can start the discussion. Uh, in Holland, traditionally, 70% uh, is planted on quince C uh, in Holland. That, that's a weak rootstock and a productive rootstock. But traditionally, the last uh, 20 years, is planted 70% of quince MC. Uh, in Belgium, uh, it's 70% is planted on quince Adams. That's introduced around 50 years ago. Uh, in Belgium, Quince Adams is a little bit stronger than Quince C. And recently, since 2013, Quince Eline is introduced in Holland. And uh, that's an interesting new rootstock in Holland. Now, we have a rootstock trial also on the research station, and we compare these three rootstocks together. And this is a bit the summary. And then, then I would... Uh, uh, end the presentation with, with this summary. The summary is that if you compare the rootstocks, Quince C, Quince Adams, and Quince Eline, is that Quince C has the lowest uh, growing level, Quince Adams has the highest growing level, and Quince Eline is a little bit in between. Uh, you have in Australia the Quince A, 
Quince A is stronger than Quince Adams. That's about 20%, 20 to 30% stronger than Quince Adams. So these root stocks are all uh, have a lower growing level compared to uh, the Quince A you used to use in uh, Australia. Now productions are comparable if you manage the, the, uh, the root stocks, the, 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 the trees with root pruning, then the productions are comparable of the root stocks. Also the fruit weight is comparable. The fruit quality is interesting because Quince C and Quince Adams is comparable. Uh, talking about fruit quality, so about the skin quality actually. However, Quince Elena, we say we see that uh, the Quince Elena has a smoother skin. And you can see it on the photo below. If you look at the Quince A, you see that the photo is a little bit, yeah, this is normal um, uh, for conference pairs that it has quite a lot of bronze on it, uh, not russeting, but we call it bronze. And Quince Elena has a more smoother skin. And we see, see it also on other varieties, not really the bronze, uh, but then we look at the lanty cells, for example, a Migo is a new variety. Uh, on Quince C, it has quite big lanty cells, and Quince Elena gives smaller lanty cells. So, yeah, Quince Elena is, is a bit sm uh, smoother compared to uh, the other rootstocks, and that's quite interesting. An other interesting thing that, but that's mainly for Europe and for Eastern Europe, but also a little bit for Holland and also for the tree nurseries, is that Quince Elena is much more frost resistant compared to uh, Quince C. And this is a photo of the frost resistancy. It's not so interesting for Australia, so I will not talk about it. Um, this is interesting in Holland, is that Quince Elena is a very interesting new rootstock. And 70% uh, uh, in the nurseries is now quinzaline, and that's because the, the, the nurseries, they don't want to take any risk uh, of frost uh, damage. Uh, in Holland, it happens once every 20 years, we have minus 20, minus 25, and then a lot of rootstocks, uh, they will, a lot of trees, in, especially in the nurseries, but also in the orchards, they will die. And uh, when you don't cover it well with compost, and uh, that's the reason why the nurseries choose um, quite massive for quinzaline and also for growers there's a lot of uh, good things uh, however there are also some um, yeah, special things with quinzaline and one is that the fruits are really smoother so it's a little bit older type of uh, uh, conference pair and quinzaline uh, i think that's on the last slide uh, quinzaline has a little bit more issues with watering. So if the watering is not optimum, uh, you get a little bit less growth, especially uh, with starting up uh, the new, uh, new orchards. Then watering, and also in nurseries, you see watering is extremely important for quinzaline. And that's also why it's not so much planted in Belgium on lighter soils. So water management, and that's what we see in improved our Randwijk. We have good quality clay soil with uh, irrigation, with sprinkler irrigation system, with everything. And then, then we see no problems with, with quinzaline. So that, that's another thing with, with quinzaline. Okay, uh, that was uh, uh, my presentation about uh, different planting systems and about rootstocks. So I'd just like to um, introduce our panel members. So we have Marcel Veens, Mick Crisera, Dr. Ian Goodwin and Chris Georgopoulos, who will join us on camera. And we'd like to encourage you all to take this opportunity to ask Dirk any questions that you have while he's online with us um, about the various planting systems and rootstocks that he's mentioned today. You can, you, you can ask those questions using the Q&A function at the bottom, or if you're very keen, you can come on camera with us. I'm going to hand over to Mick to lead the discussion now. Okay, thanks Rose, thanks Dirk, that was very good, um, very informative and um, yeah, I'm, sure I'm seeing a few Q&A come up. So I might go to those questions f first, Dirk, and, and some, some of these the panel may be able to answer, but also yourself. So I'll go to Q&A first. So obviously um, one question on the presentation from Lexi, uh, what were the negative effects of bending compared to cracking? And that, that, that's really interesting. Uh, cracking is really uh, yeah, quite uh, having a, 
uh, we see a lot of advantages of cracking in the last 10 years. We started with it in cherries, after that in pears, and now we do it also in apples. But the difference in, between cracking and bending is, is if you bend a branch, uh, then you have always a part where you get shoot growth on. Um, especially when you bend it not in the, in the correct way with a little bit of a, yeah, we call it the cut belt. You, you see there's always growth coming uh, on the branch uh, when you do bending because the, uh, uh, the, the, the moisture that goes into the, the table branch is, is exactly the same. But when you do the cracking, then you um, uh, slow down uh, the branch and make it more productive. And then you don't see this shoot growth coming uh, on these table branches. So then you don't need to remove uh, the table branch and uh, you know, make a new table branch, but you can use it, especially in the first uh, three years after planting. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the reason why we went from bending to cracking. Okay, thanks, Dirk. Marcel, is there any sort of experience from Australia you want to share with that as well, Marcel? Or? No, I have to say that um, you, yeah, we have not in the peers, we have traditionally not bent much at all. You know, we uh, basically break as well. We had Jeff the Costa probably 20 years ago <laughs> in Australia, and we started basically breaking from then on. Because we have been very little in apples, we bent, in peers, we do it basically not. You know, that's how it works. Okay. That's all what I have to say. Yep. Okay. Um, can I just add something there, Nick? Yep. Uh, yeah, I'd just be a little bit cautious because we generally, if you don't support that branch with the cutting that Dirk was, you know, showing, uh, it, it'll just with the weight of the pears, it'll just break off completely. So, would you agree, Dirk? Yeah, absolutely. If you do the cracking, you need to adjust the table branch to a wire system and using clips uh, to do it. Uh, in practice, what we do in Holland is, is, is uh, if you work with unskilled labor, you bend the branch first, and then afterwards you go around and then with one hand you, you, you put the, the branch down and with the other hand you, you make the cut. Uh, that, that's what we basically do in, in practice and that works really sufficient. Uh, be because sometimes, especially when you use knip trees, uh, yeah, if you have one leader, it's okay, but the other ones are also strong, the other, uh, the other branches, and, and then uh, they are too strong compared to the leader. Yeah. I have to the say, the, the cracking. I thought cutting was very interesting, Derek, from you that you put it on the top. We normally break by hand, but I thought that's a very good way of doing that, actually. That's yeah. something I picked up today. That's for sure. Yeah, you only need a special scissor for it, eh? So yeah, the scissor with only the blade on the, on the yeah. bottom part. On That's the, the one we always use, Derek. We don't oh, use oh, anything okay. else. Okay, <laughs> um, I'll move to the next question. Thanks, guys. Um, this is from Mark. Have you any experience with quinceline in Spain or France? And does, it, uh, does the fruit suffer from sunburn? Um, not really, I have to say. Um, I think, and, and that's also for Australia, um, I think, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think what, what Marcel already said when we prepared this, this meeting is that Quince C is just too weak for, uh, for Australia. And Quince A, you have a lot of good results with Quince A. Uh, Quince A is just too vigorous for Holland. We don't get the productions uh, on Quince A. Um, so um, I think Quince Aline, it's interesting. However, uh, with the watering problems we see in Belgium with Quinzeline, I don't, uh, it's, it's good to try it uh, in Australia, but I'm not sure if it will be a success. But I don't know the, the examples of, of Quinzeline in Spain and in France. It's mainly planted quite a lot in Eastern Europe. So Poland, uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, uh, where they get the really heavy winters. There Quinzeline is really popular. And also of course in, uh, in Holland, uh, Belgium, but even in Belgium, we see already more problems with watering. Okay. Um, and then we've got another one. Does Quincy Lane require an interstem? Uh, depend on the variety. Uh, with conference, it does not uh, require interstem. Uh, Comis, of, obviously not. Uh, 
Lucas, uh, uh, we don't do Lucas on Quinn Zelie, uh, Burre Alexander Lucas, with uh, Xenia, and that's a new variety, you always need an interstem. Uh, with, but you also need an interstem with uh, Quinn's A or Quinn's C or Quinn's Adams. So uh, depends depends on the variety. But uh, for the normal traditional varieties, you, you don't need an interstem. No. Yeah, I think the trees we've got just recently uh, on Aline, I think they've all got interstem. Is that right? Do you, do you remember? And it's Bury Hardy, is it? Uh, Camise, I think, and, and a bit of mixture. I think Camise and Bury Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. And so we don't really probably know whether the cultivars that they're on are, um, need an interstem or not. Is that fair to say, Nick, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. It's probably something we've got to try to see whether they do need interstem or not with Australian yeah. varieties, yeah. Problem is always with the interstem or no interstem is that you find it out after 10, 15 years. <laughs> That's the problem, you know. Yeah, the incompatibility shows up when the trees start breaking. <laughs> Yes, but uh, that, that, a... That's what happened with uh, the Xenia, Marshall, in Holland. Uh, they first thought, okay, it could, could without interstem. And now the, the, the growers who plant the Xenia in, the, in the, let's say, the first five years of the Xenia club, they're suffering a lot. And the growers who plant the Xenia right now, they are really happy because it's all planted on interstem. So, uh, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, it, it takes 10 years to, 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 to see know. What, yeah, to know. Maybe that's something for the DPI to work out that we have a system where we can work that out quicker, basically. Yeah. 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 Um, and another question for Mark Has any work been carried out on cordon systems using more than two litres? For example, 1.5 litres uh, between trees, three metre rows, and four litres per tree? Um, yes. Yes, uh, it's tried uh, in Holland, uh, but then I talk about, yeah, let's say 15 to 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, nowadays nobody is doing it anymore. Um, the reason, the main reason is that uh, most nurseries, they make quite short uh, rootstocks in Holland and uh, you plant them quite deep because um, otherwise you get, you, we can get the problems with the frost eh, on Quince uh, C and Quince Adams, most used uh, rootstocks. Like 2012 was a disaster uh, in Holland. Uh, uh, every grower had one or two hectares who died because of frost damage. Um, and if you plant uh, a tree in an angle, uh, then you can get e earlier uh, um, the tree on an own root. Uh, you can, because you plant so deep, the roots can go early to, to an own root and not to, to, to only the rootstock anymore. So that's a bit the, the biggest reason why they don't use the cordon systems, the cord systems to, uh, to a two liter uh, system or to uh, a four liter system. Okay. Um, I have another question from Bo. Does anyone on the panel know of any quince Elaine in Australia? Um, I can answer that or Ian or, yeah. At the moment, the APFIP um, have, have got quintiline getting out to the nurseries at the moment. So uh, some nurseries are now are starting to build stock of quintiline, but there's not much available at the moment. But um, yeah, that, that definitely something to talk about maybe with um, APFIP as well as, your, as well as your nurseries. Yeah. yeah. And so we've put in a few trees at, at Tatura as a demonstration. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mick, I think, um, I haven't actually seen the trees yet, um, uh, but yeah, there's um, 131118, um, Packham, uh, um, Corella, uh, Williams, is that right, Nick? Yeah, there's a few different varieties on there, Williams, yep, Rico, yep. Um, someone's, uh, uh, does Selena require an interstem on Quintiline? Um, <clears throat> I have to look for that. Um, I'm just opening the presentation uh, for next year, uh, next week already about varieties. Probably I can come back on it uh, next week. Yep. Uh, when I, I, I thought they, they put a standard, an interstem in, uh, in, in Selena already, but just, just give me a second and I can 
Um, I think there's a, a standard, there's, a, there's an interstem uh, involved in Quinn's Aline with all rootstocks. So it's mainly planted on Quinn's Adams and Quinn's Aline in, uh, in Belgium. And uh, they, some kind of a standard, they, also to be sure, they put an interstem in it. Uh, but um, I'm not 100% sure, so I have to, to find out. Uh, I will come back on it next week. Okay, Dirk. Um, Chris, Chris, I'm going to get you talking. Um, BA29, Chris, and maybe do you want to share your experience with dwarfing, uh, obviously, the newer stocks of, pay, of the paintings you've got, Chris? No. But maybe Ian, Ian can, in the meantime, say something about the suck and then we come back to Chris again. Yep. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I don't have any experience. Chris has got the experience with BA-29. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with the other wood sucks. Yeah. Yes, yes. At Tatura okay, with, thanks, mate. At Tatura, we've compared a few different root stocks. Uh, Quince C, Quince A with D6, BP1, um, and a couple of, you know, D6 with Nijisigi interstem. Um, uh, and, and look, we, we've... And that's on three cultivars come out of the Australian pear breeding program. And we don't really see any difference between Quince C and Quince A, um, despite, you know, the discussion I've seen already about Quince C being a lot, you know, um, more dwarfing than Quince A. We, we're not seeing any difference. Uh, big difference between those two and D6. Um, and, in, and in fact, BP1 is even, uh, I wouldn't recommend BP1. It's a bit of a struggle. Um, you know, it, it tends to suffer from excessive um, irrigation and uh, it, it, it basically starts to go backwards with excessive irrigation in our soil types. And, um, and also if it gets a bit water stressed, it goes backwards pretty quickly as well. So um, yeah, the real big finding, I suppose, is very little difference between Quince C and Quince A. Both of them have performed pretty well, probably, um, uh, you know, smaller trees, but also uh, yielded extremely well. And flowering seems to be advanced as well in them. So more precocious, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just going to ask some more questions, I suppose. Like with, um, obviously, in Australia, we're seeing a lot more orchards um, being planted sort of on a planar two-dimensional type systems. Um, you know, either flat two-dimensional or the cordon um, to maximise labour efficiencies. Dirk, do you have any sort of opinions on what's better, a flat system where you break limbs down or, or uh, you know, or a cordon system planting for pears, so both on a V trellis? Um, <clears throat> I think there are, uh, there are more ways to roam. Eh? That, that's also what I, uh, I mentioned in the, in the presentation. Um, yeah, what, what we see in Holland, uh, both V systems, slender spindle and double leader systems, these are the most popular. And with the cordon systems, we have a bit the problem that it is positive, eh? high productions, high yields in the first years. However, after some years, uh, if you have a bad year, if, for example, hail damage or frost damage or uh, that you cannot get the production, then you need to be, uh, you need to take care that you don't end up in a too vigorous tree. Because when you get into vigor, then it's really hard to get it back again uh, to, to, uh, to a, a, a level that it's really into balance. Uh, and, and balance is, is, of course, very important. And to get a, a V trellis, a V system or a double leader system into balance is much easier compared to a, um, a court system. Um, so I think still there are more ways to roam, but this is something really important. Okay, well, thanks, Dirk. I think we might wrap it up there. I'm not sure if Marcel, you want to add anything, or Ian, um, before um, we we wrap it up. But I think um, we've covered off some some good questions there, and I'm I'm really happy with how it's gone. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk yeah about very quickly, uh, it comes back to tree volume, basically. You know, how many liters per hectare to get production, basically. That's to sum it up what Dirk was saying. There's a lot of ways to do that. Cordon system works quite well on more vigorous woodstock and get the precocity that way, you know, that's all. Yeah. 
Okay. You can wrap it up, Michael. Okay, thanks, guys. Over to you, Rose. Thanks very much, Mick. And um, thank you very much to Dirk, Marcel, Mick, Ian, and Chris for taking the time to come and join us and for sharing your insights today. I'd also like to thank Larissa Vaughan, who's in the background, making sure that everything runs as smoothly as it does. Um, if you've got any other questions, please follow up with us at the APAL office or with the panel members directly. Um, um, we'll, we'll try and answer your questions that way. You can find today's presentation slides and videos in the Future Orchards Library on the APAL website and a recording will be available in a few days. And thank you all out there for participating. We'll be conducting a short evaluation at the end of this, the session as you exit. You'll see a pop-up box that directs you to an online survey. And we'd really appreciate if you can take two minutes to complete it because your feedback helps to guide what we're doing. The Pear Masterclass is part of the Future Orchards program, a project run by APAL, funded by Hort Innovation using the Apple and Pear Industry R&D levy and contributions from the Australian Government. Don't forget to register for session two, which will run next week the, on September the 9th, sorry, the, September the 9th at four o'clock. This session will focus on the most interesting new varieties in Europe and Australia and how they compare. You can see a summary of the next two pair masterclass sessions, the spring or future orchards walks and upcoming webinars on the screen now. And you can find more information about these on the APAL website under the events tab. If you've got anything else that you're particularly interested, please let us know at the APAL office. In the next two weeks, we'll also be delivering the Spring Future Orchards Walks, which will focus on how to manage your orchard and adapt your workforce in a global pandemic. The delivery of the walks will differ somewhat um, from normal and from region to region, depending on the local COVID regulations. The online sessions will stream on the 17th and 18th of September for the Southern and Northern Loops respectively. Please check your region's event page on the APEL website or reach out to your local frontline advisor and, um, to find more information. In the meantime, thanks for joining us. Stay safe and socially distanced and we look forward to seeing you at one of the many sessions running across September. See you later. <laughs>